Hey all, here OS Reviews. A couple months back, we checked out a cool mechanical keyboard called the Quick 840. It has a touchscreen display on the side, which can act as a trackpad. You can use it for additional numpad, controlling things, including a calculator, extra command functions that you can program. And I thought it was a cool concept. Today, we're taking a look at another model, which has a secondary touchscreen combined to a mechanical keyboard, but on a larger scale. This is the Quamsi K2. And the reason why I think it's a little bit more well fleshed out is since it has a much larger display on the top, namely over 12.5 inches for you to take a look at something like a file manager, a second window, and also control things like shortcuts. In certain scenarios, whether it's music production, video editing, it can make a lot of sense. It uses gate around switches for the keyboard component. Blue switches are included by default, though you can also swap them out for brown and red switches, depending on your preference. Multifunctional touch keyboard, which we'll take a closer look at in a moment. One thing I will say though, is for such a novel concept, you are gonna have to pay a little bit more of a premium price. Uh, this model in particular sells a bit north of 350 bucks. Although keeping in mind, you're basically paying for a external monitor plus a mechanical keyboard two in one, it can perhaps be easier to justify, although whether that's practical for you is gonna vary from case to case. Wrist pad, so you can pop it there and make it a little comfortable on your wrist as you are typing. We also have some of the cables, including a type C to type C, which is what you'll need for the video output. And you also have a quick user guide along with the keycap holder if you want to replace the keys or wash them off. And finally here, we also get some additional cables, including a type A USB to a full-sized HDMI for cases, uh, say a laptop that doesn't have type C. So let's take a closer look at the design here. It has more of a boxy shape as a result, but does feel very well constructed. The entire frame here is made of a solid chunk of aluminum metal, and as a result, this thing weighs around three pounds, so it's not light uh, per se. The top here features some dedicated volume and also power keys. We have the USB Type-C both for power and data, along with the Type-A ports. Then on the very back here, we have just some elevated feet if you want to pop it up at an angle. Just keep in mind that this is not a wireless keyboard, so there is no built-in battery, meaning that it's not gonna work in a Bluetooth mode, for instance, which would have been maybe a cool function to entertain. And of course, like most devices that have a touchscreen, you have to be a little more careful in the sense of not dropping it. The wrist pad there at the bottom, so this is not necessarily a part designed exclusively for the keyboard. It's more of a bonus, I'd say. It doesn't really magnetically lock into the unit, but it still is relatively comfortable as you're typing. Let's take a quick look here at that keyboard. So we can see that underneath, it is indeed just a Gatoron blue switch, pretty typical stuff. And you can also use the a switch remover as well to further pull this out and completely customize uh, even the switch if you desire. And that is with the feet elevated. If I actually pop these down and put it onto something like a mat, the sound will be slightly softer. So overall, it's still pretty tactile and clicky, very satisfying to type on, like most blue switch keyboards, although it is gonna be a little louder than brown switch or red switch. It really is that second display attached on that makes it special. Right now, we plugged it into a Windows 11 laptop, you can see by default, it's not gonna be necessarily full screen because it's mirroring at full HD. Go to extend display settings, and then we have to choose uh, under the display properties, uh, the resolution here, which is 920 by 515. But you can see that functionality here in terms of touch is already working and it is responding quite well just using this one cable. We can also tell that the bottom portion here for the keyboard is indeed backlit, so you are able to see it a little bit more easily if you are in a darker space. Perhaps for a more immersive experience in the future, they could consider moving the I.O. to the left or right side of the keyboard instead. One benefit there is you can actually put it on top of the laptop and kind of replace the conventional keyboard, but right now because there's a wire, it still leaves a bit of a gap if you try to do that. Still a pretty interesting overall effect, and overall it is plug and play. In fact, it kind of reminds me of something like a typewriter from back in the day. There was this device called the Diana by AlphaSmart that was released a decade ago that had a Palm OS interface in the top, also a very stretched aspect ratio and a keyboard at the bottom. It really reminds me of something like this, but of course this model doesn't have any internal guts. You still have to connect it to another computer for it to operate, but 
nonetheless, a pretty interesting idea. Now, if you tap on the top key there once, you can also slide through some of the advanced settings for the display, such as brightness level as well as contrast. You can change the color temperature uh, and tweak the RGB saturation accordingly, as well as turn on a blue light filter as well. And overall, it's relatively bright and it's not too hard to see if there's a bit of light hitting on it. Although because it isn't a truly laminated screen, there's still a slight gap. It does cause a little bit of reflections if you're using it in direct sunlight, but overall has good viewing angles and has an overall very good color reproduction in terms of accuracy, as well as vividness of the colors are quite good for an IPS LCD panel. It's a pretty clever solution because you can open up a second program, something like a notepad or sticky note, and begin to type along, entering something like a note there at the top, and then at the same time still be browsing the web or doing research on the other display of your laptop. Now, interestingly, another platform that is supported but not directly advertised would be Chrome OS. In fact, the auto scaling in Chrome OS seems to be a little more intelligent out of the devices I've tested compared to Windows, which is a bit ironic. And it's recognized as that full stretched aspect ratio automatically. Everything is scaled correctly, in fact, including things like the touch bar. So once again, in terms of workflow, you can open up something like a calculator here. Yes, it will be super stretched, but it works just fine. And you can then be doing something else entirely on the main computer display, like browsing a web page, opening up a document, something like that. With that being said, of course, going after a super widescreen aspect ratio is kind of cinematic in a way. That's what Sony always does on their smartphones. So you could always try watching back certain videos, but even that will not fill up the entire width here. You'll still get a little bit of a black bar. And of course it doesn't have a adjustable tilt on this display, which is maybe something they could consider adding in the future. So you can change the angle of elevation and keep in mind that there is no, uh, say, built-in speaker on the unit itself, so it's still coming out from your main computer. Display quality on its own is really not shabby, I have to say. You're able to draw and doodle on here. The touchscreen is indeed very responsive, so things like multi-touch work exactly as expected, as you can see there. And here's an example using an Android smartphone that has a desktop mode, and you can see that it's also going to be recognized just fine. But keep in mind the power will be consumed uh, using the phone's battery pack. So it's going to last a little bit shorter as a result, but it's still cool. Although granted on Android, you can tell some of the scaling is also not going to be 100% there by default. You kind of have to wrestle with the settings similar to in Windows. Now over here, we can play around with some of the backlight by tapping on function and insert. So by default, it's going in this carousel view, but once more, it goes into more of a candy-like rippling effect. Some of these animations are quite similar to other standard mechanical keyboards we've seen in the past, but still look quite good. Let's try that once more. Slowly kind of fades on and off. This one is a little bit more mesmerizing, but maybe not quite as practical in terms of everything staying lit. Here is one that is in one color. Once more here into kind of a animated mode that goes like a snake back and forth between the rows. And then I can tap on it again to go into a rainbow effect that slowly changes in between the colors. Also looks quite good. Once more here, that goes into more of a breathing pattern, as you can see there. And it will go into kind of a rippling pattern, which will dance and strobe accordingly to how you're typing along. And also looks quite good as a reactive showcase, but maybe not quite as practical. This one is kind of a reactive memory trail that will slowly fade after a few seconds, as you can see there. Once more here, which ripples outwards in a continuous row. By default, it's yellow, but you can also change the color of the reactions to be red, green, or any color from the RGB spectrum just by using the arrow keys again. Let's go into another one, which is a rippling snake. Again, we can change things like the animation, make it slower here to almost pause frame by frame, or also make it faster here and it will flow more continuously. Once more here is another kind of random pattern and I can tap again to go into a sideways scrolling motion. Also looks really good. And then going back to the original mode. So it is highly customizable. So that is more or less it as far as our quick hands-on review of the Quamzy K2. This is definitely one of the most unique keyboards that I've ever seen, and I think it is quite clever, and there are certainly use cases like micro apps, sticky notes, certain editing tools that you can take advantage of the touchscreen here, adding additional keys and functionality while still having the primary display on top that makes it quite useful. The keyboard itself is like most conventional 72 key layouts. It is quite comfortable to type on for documents and essays. 
But that being said, it's not without its quirks. For example, if the screen can tilt or the cables maybe were placed on the side, maybe having built-in battery and Bluetooth could make it even more versatile in my opinion. And ultimately you have to consider whether you will find value in a design like this since you are paying a little bit more of a premium. However, for folks that are doing, like I said, more creative editing, then this all-in-one design could still be useful in those cases. Definitely a conversation starter. You can check out more details if you're interested in the links down below. For now, it's been our video. Thanks for watching here at OS Reviews. That's been the Quamzi K2.